Okay. So this is going to be a webinar on how to customize a study plan for you and what's best for you and your studying on the GRE. Hello everyone, my name is Taryn, that's like Karen, but with a T, and I'll be your presenter for today's webinar. I have been working out as a test prep tutor at Magoosh for about 10 months now. A little bit about me, I was born and raised in Southern California, and I currently live in San Diego. I have a bachelor's degree in developmental psychology from UCSD, and I'm planning to study biology in grad school. I love math, science, writing, and music, and my favorite quarantine snack is sour gummies. Right. So our agenda, first we're going to do a little bit of housekeeping, and then we'll go through figuring out how long to study for the GRE. And then we'll go through an overview of the Magoosh study schedules. And we'll talk about adjusting the schedule to your specific needs. And then after, we'll have a Q&A. Right. Housekeeping. We'll send the recording and any additional resources after in an email. We'll have a Q&A at the end of the uh, session to answer any dire questions. And if we don't get to your question, you can email us anytime at help at magoosh.com. All right. So how long should you study for the GRE? Depending on your individual situation, you'll likely need between one and six months to study. When considering how long to prepare for the GRE, think about the scores you need for your target grad schools, your skill level, and your experience. All of these factors will affect how much of a challenge this process will be. The first thing to ask yourself is how far in the future you'd want to take the test. This will depend primarily on the submission deadlines of your target grad schools. You should try to take the GRE no later than six weeks prior to the due date. So now you know how much time there is between now and your ideal test date. If you add on to that the amount of committed study time you have already invested and subtract from it the amount of time you'll be unable to study between now and the test date, then you know the maximum time frame you will have had available for studying. But you may not need the maximum. Next, ask yourself how many hours per week you can devote to GRE study. There are 168 hours in a week. You need some of those for sleep, of course. You probably have to allocate some of those hours to work and or school, and you may need some commute time as well. Also, you should reserve some time for your friends, family, and yourself. You can use all the leftover time for studying. For example, let's say there are 12 weeks between your test and when you start studying, and you can study about nine hours per week. This means you can study for 108 hours. Will you need all of this time though? If English is not your first language or one of your first languages, then the answer is probably yes. The GRE verbal is already difficult for native speakers. It is especially so for non-native speakers. But don't worry, you can still do well, but you may have to study for six months or even longer. Also, how good are you at math? If you regularly work with math, you're likely to need less preparation in that area and less study time overall. If you're unsure about how strong your GRE math skills are, try taking a GRE quantitative diagnostic test. Another question to ask, do you read a lot? If you have been reading diligently over the years, then you probably have strong vocabulary and reading comprehension skills, and you will not need as much time prepping for the GRE. Also, if you're unsure about how strong your verbal skills are, 
we have a diagnostic test for that too. Another question, how well have you generally done on standardized tests? If you are good at taking tests like the ACT, SAT, AP tests, for example, you should not have to study for more than four months. Also, how competitive are the programs you're applying to? The more competitive the grad schools, the more you should study. Also note that some programs only care about your score in one area, while some will care about your score in both. How far away are you from your ideal score? In order to get an accurate picture of your current state, you must take a GRE practice test to identify your strengths and weaknesses if you haven't already taken a GRE. Then look at the programs you're applying to and see how close you are to their students' average scores. If your combined score on the practice GRE test, that is your math score plus your verbal score, if that's somewhere between 295 and 315, then you are probably at a, about an average skill level. The average student needs roughly 100 hours to study. And given your specific strengths and weaknesses in math, verbal, or test taking, you may need more or less time than that. Your necessary study time could be as low as 25 hours or as high as 180 hours. If you divide 100 hours or however many you need by how many hours per week you are available to study, then you will have the amount of weeks you will need to study and this will help you determine which study plan to select from the one week, the one month, the 90 day or the six month study plans. Alternatively, if your time is really limited, you can choose a study plan based solely upon the time left until your test. Okay. So we have a few questions already. The first is, when is the best time to take the GRE? I'm currently a sophomore. All right, if you're a sophomore in undergrad, it's probably a bit early to be thinking about the GRE. Well, you should start thinking about it, but don't start stressing about it just yet. Uh, ideally, if you want to go directly to grad school after undergrad, you're going to want to take it sometime in the latter half of your senior year. If you are going to take some time off between undergrad and grad school, you're going to want to take it closer to when you want to do grad school. Okay, next question. Is 10 days of rigorous 10 hours per day study enough to go from 295 to 315? Okay. So that's a 10 point jump in each section. 100 hours. 100 hours will probably get you more around a five point jump per section, realistically. But 10 points is very ambitious. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it is ambitious. Next question. Will the diagnostic test help us determine which study plan we should select from Magoosh? It will definitely help. It will help you determine where you are on your path to studying for either math or verbal. And that'll help you determine how long you need to study and which plan to select. All right. So now I'm going to talk about the Magoosh study schedules. Again, we have the one week, the one month, the 90 day, or the six month. Those usually work for most people, but let's say that none of the aforementioned study plans work well for your timeline 
and every plan is either too long or too short for you. What should you do in this case? There are a few ways to adapt these published study plans to your specific needs. When adapting a schedule, it's often easier to maximize it than to minimize it. For this reason, if you need a plan for something between one and three months, consider adding to the one month plan rather than subtracting from one of the 90 day plans. If you need a two month plan, for example, you can study the one month plan at half time in which one of in which one day of the schedule equals two of your days. This would make the usually very intense one month plan into something much more manageable. Let's suppose you have four months between now and test day. The six month plan is probably far too long, but you can start with the 90 day plan that works best for you. However, you will then have to fill that out with another month of supplemental material interspersed within your scheduled studying, like Manhattan's GRE prep workbooks. Alternatively, if you especially struggle with math or verbal, you could use the extra time to rewatch those lesson videos on your weak points. You can also use the extra time to increase how much you are reading, which is never a bad thing. Now let's suppose you have one month and you know you are strong in math, but you need to focus on verbal or vice versa. In that case, you may just take the quizzes at the end of the math lesson modules. If you do well on every quiz, then you can confirm that you probably are in good shape in math. To focus on verbal, you should watch every verbal lesson twice, making sure not to repeat any a second time until you have seen them all. Then you should do all the verbal practice questions. If you have any time left over for the math questions, use the custom practice tab in your account to select only the hard practice questions. You would do the reverse as verbal is your stronger subject and you struggle with math. Also, the more you can adapt to switching gears to any topic and any source in any moment, the more ready you will be on test day. However you decide to adjust the study plans, make sure you're still switching things up topic-wise. If you look on the Magoosh GRE blog site, you'll find downloadable and printable versions of each study plan. These study plans include up-to-date essential and recommended materials. We also added strategies for studying with our flashcard apps with the recommended vocabulary materials. In addition, the study plans are filled with Magoosh questions and practice tests, which includes our free GRE practice test with answers and explanations. As we have discussed, it is important to determine how long you have to study for the GRE and identify your strengths and weaknesses in order to pick the plan that most closely meets your needs and is best for the situation. We have study plans that will help you focus on math or verbal, and we also have study plans catered to either beginning or advanced GRE students. Once you have selected the appropriate plan for you, you should download all the essential materials listed in the study plan. It's ideal to print the Google Doc version of your chosen study plan because then you can use that printed version to check off assignments that you have completed, highlighted concepts that you need to review and take notes on your progress. I recommend carrying it with you and studying on the go, as on the go as you can be during quarantine. When using the study plan, if possible, you should study a little bit six days a week each week before your GRE. However, you should not study the day before the test. Use that day to de-stress and reward yourself for all of your hard work. If you follow the study schedule, keep track of your progress, eat well, get good sleep, exercise, and make sure to take fun study breaks, you should be perfectly fine. For an extra boost to your study plan, you can adapt it so that you can re review concepts on the go. 
Downloading the Magoosh GRE Prep app can help with that. In the app, you can view and track your lessons on the smartphone anywhere you go. If you're looking for more resources to turn to in your studies, check out our big list of free GRE resources, which will be sent to you. This list will help you discover where to find free GRE practice to sharpen your skills even further, as well as the best places to find all the resources you could ever need before test day. Of course, the links to the app and the resource list will be sent to you all in an email. In summary, Magoosh publishes GRE study schedules to help folks in various situations study for the GRE. Think of the study plans as incredible resources that you can use as best benefits you. We have plans for one week, one month, three months, and six months. Three months is a good solid chunk of time to study for the GRE, an interval that many students use, myself included. So we have four different three-month plans to focus on the needs of different students. One month is not much time to integrate everything on the GRE test, so that study schedule has a very intense pace. If you need to stretch the time out a bit, add a few more resources, as long as you are consistently focused on the GRE every day of your studying. You're always free to do what you need to do to get the most out of your resources. All right. The most challenging aspect of studying for the GRE is learning to manage your study time wisely. Staying organized and self-motivated while fighting the temptation to procrastinate is not easily, is not easy. Luckily, Magusha's GRE study schedules, which accompany our GRE prep, will take care of all the organization and planning for you. Whether you have one week to prepare for the GRE or several months, and whether you're a true beginner or an advanced GRE student, we have a study schedule for you. We have one week study schedule two one-month study schedules, daily or weekly, one weekly 90-day study schedule, four daily 90-day study schedules, one for math students, one for verbal students, one for overall beginner students, and one for overall advanced students. We also have two weekly six-month study schedules, one for math beginners and one for advanced math students. So let's see if we have any questions on this section. Do the three month beginner plan and three month advanced plan cover both entire syllabus or does the plan skip few of the basics in each section? Yeah, uh, the advanced plan skips some of the basics and focus more on the more rigorous and advanced you skip arithmetic and do more algebra and geometry and such. Second question, the plans are self-paced, right? Yes, they are. Your next question, in a month, can I do all verbal for GRE? It depends on how far away you are from your goal. If you have a moderate level vocabulary and you're trying to get more advanced, then a month should be sufficient. But if you're trying to go from a beginner to an advanced student in verb, that may be more of a challenge. All right. Now for adjusting the schedule to your specific needs. About midway through your study schedule, you should start to reassess your strengths and weaknesses and take notes of the progress you've made. Are there any topics you've already covered that you still struggle to understand? How can you remedy any persistent difficulties? First, it's important to know that there are some topics and skills the GRE 
prioritizes the most. Your primary goal should be to foster these skills in order to do well on both the verbal and quantitative sections. Doing so may require adjusting your study schedule somewhat. While prepping for the GRE, it's important to understand the different GRE verbal question types because the mixture of question types require you to switch gears quickly. We'll take a look at the breakdown of questions you can expect to see in verbal sections, including what each GRE verbal question type requires, how frequently it appears, where in the section it comes up, and where to go for more practice. This will help you to know what strengths you should focus on developing. Of the 40 scored verbal questions that you will see during the test, around 23 of them will be reading comprehension. I expect to see passages of varying topics accompanied by multiple choice questions of varying complexity. Critical reading is the most important skill to use when approaching reading comprehension questions. These texts are complex, so you can't just casually skim the passages. You want to practice the skill extensively, read as much as you can, and take notice of the main ideas of the text. Nine of the scored Oh, also, uh, the reading comprehension comes at the middle of the test, generally. Nine of the scored verbal questions will be sentence equivalents. Those come at the end. GRE sentence equivalents questions give you a sentence, then ask you to fill in the blank with two vocabulary words that will give the sentence the same meaning. The most important skill for this section is having a firm grasp of synonyms. Knowing which of the word choices have similar meanings will make answering the question significantly easier. Of course, for this, you will have to strengthen your vocabulary. Try creating your own mini thesaurus for each of the new words you learn while studying. Finally, the rest of the scored verbal questions are text completion, and those come at the beginning of the section. GRE text completion questions ask you to fill in blanks to create completed sentences within short passages of between one and five sentences. You'll have to read the entire passage to understand what word each sentence needs. There can be between one and three blanks per passage. The most important skill for this section is not memorizing vocabulary words as some might think but understanding how words are used in the context of speech. Try generating original sentences using the new words in your notes. And if the setting allows, slipping them into your own vocabulary. As for the quantitative section, it is important to be familiar with the most important GRE math question types and their respective frequencies. They are, in order of decreasing frequency, word problems, percents, ratios, and fractions, algebra, data interpretation, integer properties and arithmetic, two-dimensional geometry, statistics, powers and roots, inequalities, probability and combinatorics, coordinate geometry, three-dimensional geometry, sequences, and functions. These concepts overlap in many typical GRE math questions. You should be prepared to deal with at least two of the concepts simultaneously in the same problem, and you should seek out practice questions that allow you to multitask. If you filter through the question types under your review tab, you will be able to see which math topics are your strengths and weaknesses. Word problems make up a large plurality of the GRE quantitative section, roughly 36% of the test. Because of this, you should obviously make sure you are strong in this category. However, before tackling the word problems, you must be good at the topics upon which the word problems tend to build. Arithmetic and fractions, percent ratios, integer properties, and algebra. Understanding these topics is essential in order to succeed on the math test. 
Concepts related to data interpretation, geometry, and statistics can be seen as runners up in, a, in importance. These GRE math question types are of intermediate frequency. As such, these concepts are not quite as vital to your success compared to algebra percents, ratios, and fractions, and word problems, but these types of maths still show up often on the test, so you will want to study them after you have mastered the more essential topics. On the other end of the spectrum, topics like sequences and functions, which both have frequencies of under 2%, take the lowest priority in your studies. If sequence or function problems appear on your exam at all, you will likely have one or two questions posted in these two areas. They really are not the most important GRE math concepts, so it is only necessary to study them if your goal is an advanced score. While studying, your primary goal should be to develop the skills most necessary to do well. For verbal, these skills are critical reading for reading comprehension, synonym familiarity for sentence equivalence, and comprehension of context clues for text completion. If you find that midway through your study schedule, you are still struggling with the verbal section overall, it may be wise to refocus your efforts a bit more to the reading comprehension since it comprises more of the test than each of the other two categories do. Reading complex texts frequently can also help you with your vocabulary. However, if you especially struggle with one of the verbal question types, it's best that you focus on practicing the appropriate skill for that category. For the quantitative section, the skills most necessary to do well are word problems, arithmetic fractions, percents and ratios, integer properties, and algebra. Midway through studying, you will want to assess whether you are strong in these topics. If you are not, it may be wise to dedicate the rest of your math studies to them. If you find that you fare well in these topics, you may open your studies up to lower frequency topics. You should attempt to study the lowest frequency topics like probability and combinatorics, coordinate geometry, three-dimensional geometry, sequences, functions, only if you are trying to achieve an advanced score on the GRE math of 163 or higher. You can check how well you are doing at specific, specific topics by using the review tab, and you can filter your practice questions by topic in the custom practice tab. Okay, so we have some questions. Will Magoosh Premium help design a study plan for me? Well, if you have a Magoosh Premium account, the study schedule, the study schedules are a bit different and they'll be on your dashboard. And the dashboard will check off all the lesson videos you've watched as well as all the practice questions you've done. However, it won't help you determine which ones you should neglect and which ones you should go over more. That you can only do looking in your review tab and assessing your accuracy on your practice questions. Okay. Next question, I'm a math student and I'm not sure how strong I am in verbal. I'm confused if you, I should go for the beginner plan or advanced plan. Well, first I would take either a practice test or a diagnostic test or both to see how well you're doing in verbal. And you can compare the score that you get to the interpretive data from the GR, from the ETS website and see where you fall on the, on the spectrum of GRE verbal scores. Uh, if you are struggling in both math and verbal, I would say go for the beginner plan. If you are good in verbal, but you're still struggling with math, maybe go for the advanced plan, but 
uh, focus more on the math as needed. All right. So thank you for attending this webinar on customizing a study plan for you. I hope it was helpful. As a reminder, we'll send the recording and any additional resources after in the email. The resources include the links to the GRE study plans and guides, the GRE diagnostic quizzes, our free GRE practice test with answers and explanations, the download for our GRE prep app, and our list of free GRE resources. Please let us know if you think any information is missing from that list. And now I would like to open up the floor for a Q&A. There are already a few questions that have come in, so I'll look at those. Okay. First question, what is considered a good score? So a good score is relative to these targets, grad schools that you're applying to. You want to make sure that you're a little bit above what their minimums say on their uh, admission sites. If they only, if they don't present required scores and they only present average scores, make sure you're at least within that average range to have a good score. Next question, how much amount of time is required for scoring a 320 or higher? Uh, that again, depends on how far you are to, the, uh, to that goal. If you're already scoring in 300s, then it won't be as difficult to reach 320 plus if you're not. Okay. Next question. How long for a beginner to advance vocabulary? For a beginner to advance your vocabulary, I'd advise studying for at least a few months. There are a lot of words on the GRE app. I believe there are about a thousand vocab words for you to study. Hopefully you'll already have known some of them by the time you start studying, but that will take a good deal of time. And as I mentioned earlier, it's not just about memorizing words, but also understanding their meaning in context and the words that are similar to them. Okay. Currently I am going through Magoosh GRE vocab flashcards. The problem that I am facing is that I can only remember the meaning of the words when I see the options and not without it. So it sounds like you're using the GRE Vocab Builder, which is a distinct app. I would recommend switching to the flashcards, which only show you the word and either the one definition if you know it or don't know it and you can sort the cards by whether you've mastered them or whether you have it. And in order to supplement your studying, you can, as I mentioned previously, try generating your own sentences using the word. Doing this will help you process the words more deeply than just reading the, um, the definition over and over again. Next question, how do I cope with difficult English words? English part is quite difficult for me, any tips? Um, if you're struggling with English, chances are you're going to want to um, take the IELTS first. Studying for that will help you a lot in improving your vocabulary if you're a non-native English speaker. Okay. 
next question. Are you saying that the essays aren't at all that important? The essays are the section that's often neglected on uh, grad school admission sites. They usually don't care as much about the essay as they do about the math and the verbal. It's not completely unimportant. You should still try to do well, but it's less it's lesser importance, less of a priority. Okay, next question. My problem is the two essays to be written. I am slow in typing. I wish I can take the paper test, but that option is not available in my country. What should I do? If the paper test isn't available in your country and you have to take the computer test, I would recommend practicing your typing speeds. Just try finding random sets of text on the internet and trying to type them within a certain time. The average typing speed is 40 words per minute. So if you can try to get, say, 80 words in two minutes, that would be a good typing speed. Any tips for AWA? The best tips I can say are make sure that your essays are well-structured and that your examples are specific. Structure and specificity are the key to doing well on the AWA. If you structure your essay in a way that makes logical sense and flows well, and if your examples are relevant to the points that you're trying to make, then you should get a good score. Next question. I have difficulties understanding structures. How to improve understanding of difficult sentence structures? The best thing I can say for understanding difficult sentence structures is trying to break them down into smaller parts. Uh, most longer sentences are broken into pieces by commas and semicolons and other pieces of punctuation. Focus on the individual clauses within the sentence as opposed to trying to tackle the entire sentence in one. Next question. How can I increase my speed in solving quant questions? Well, the first thing to address is your accuracy. If you can't really solve the problem in four minutes, it's going to be especially challenging to solve it in a minute and 45 seconds. Always make sure that you can do the problem without any time restraints before you start adding in time restraints. And once you can do the problem, make sure you're getting progressively faster with your timing. Practice, practice, practice. Next question. How should we weigh our time in studying each section? So that's going to depend on how good you are relatively at verbal and math. If you're super strong in verbal, but not as good in math, then you're going to want to put most of your focus into math and just make sure that you're maintaining your verbal. If you're relatively um, even in both, then you're going to want to have a, an even split in studying.
Uh, next question. Does GPA matter as much if we get a good GRE score? That's a good question. It really depends on the program you're applying to. Uh, some programs are more interested in uh, specifically math and specifically verbal. And these programs are going to care more about your GRE scores. Whereas if your uh, field of choice is more broad or more general, then they might care more about APA than your GRE. Are there any other questions? All right, so I think that's it. Again, thank you for coming. It was a blast and I hope that studying goes well for you and that our study schedules are helpful for you. If you need any extra help, again, you can email help at magoosh.com. And I think that's it. Have a good day, everyone. Bye.